Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. We have from 1715. Well, <laughs> that's when the company was founded, but this actual offering is from 2017. Martel Blue Swift. It's a VSOP cognac brandy, which is what, aged about four years, and aged because it's like two years for VS, four for VSOP, and six or more for XO, right? So it's a uh, just a typical uh, brandy, cognac. It says uh, cognac VSOP finished in bourbon casks. So that's the difference here. It's finished. They finish the aging in bourbon barrels, bourbon casks. Eau de vie de vin. Enjoy our quality responsibly. This is a little 200 milliliter bottle. Got it at Savannah Discount, and you know I got it cheaper than normal. This one I also bought at Savannah Discount, cheaper than normal. It's Brandy St. Louis, introduced in 2018. It's a blend of brandies aged three to 10 years. Three to 10. So we got all kind of grades, low to high. They said it was designed to mimic good cocktail brandies from this 19th century. Here's a foil gold cap, clear on the in, you know, silver on the inside, but gold cap. Um, so that's the story on that. It's owned by uh, Riku Spirits of Texas. It's sourced, I mean, they don't have their own distillery in France. Like so many products, they contract distill it, which is common in America and France, actually. Um, BSL, Brandy St. Louis, and here's the other brandy. All right, so to, not tomorrow. Well, maybe today, actually, because tomorrow, Friday, is hard to do. Could do it, though, but um, I might do today for tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Do today's taste challenge for tomorrow. I mean, I might do a taste challenge today, tomorrow. I'll, I'll get it right. And I already had three cups of coffee. Should be sharper. <laughs> um, that'll be the Brandy San Luis versus Corbell. Corbell, California brandy. And that'll close it out because that's the only brandies I've got. To my knowledge, I don't remember any others. I think the next one I would like to get, can't say I will get it next because you never know what I'll stumble upon, but I would like to bring in San Remy, which is from Remy Martin. But San Remy, San Remy is the French brandy. Remy Martin is the cognac, so it's separated. The, in other words, the San Remy is made in France, but not the cognac region. Same company, but different operations, different facilities, different uh, distillery and blend master, and all of that. But uh, I would like to bring in the San Remy XO, XO, and I know where to buy it. I can get it at Dorgnax. It's not really that cheap, but then it's not a cheap product. James Free as Ron, looking for some more reviews with Liz. What fun to twist your content. Yes, I am going to post, I plan to post some upcoming couple of uh, duo reviews with my daughter. She doesn't get to do too many anymore. Okay. Well, first thing we know, this, the, the Martell is much darker. Dark red, reddish amber. Is that coming from the bourbon barrels? Maybe, but bourbon barrels, once they're used the first time, then the coloring is going to fade quick. The first running is going to suck up most of the charcoal, and which is going to make it red. They call it the red, that red liquor, you know, brand uh, a bourbon. The second, third, fourth, fifth time, it's going to, it's not really going to do that. So they're probably adding caramel color. Is that common for companies to add caramel color to brandy? Yeah, it's like almost always done. Same thing with scotch. Does it hurt it? Is it going to hurt you? Is it bad? Well, I mean, think about it. What's caramel? It's like sugar in a pan that's browned. You, you know, burn it to a certain level, dark. 
medium, light. You know, how is brown sugar coloring going to hurt you? You say, well, there was that lady saying it was going to cause cancer based on flimsy evidence. Right. Even beer sometimes has caramel color added. Anyway, I'm not even going to get into all that because that's just like not even worth discussing. There is uh, some light amber here, light amber. So I got to close my eyes because of the color difference, dark versus medium. I said light amber, but it's medium. So the Brandy San Luis is medium uh, amber and the Martell is dark. So since my eyes are closed, that's not going to tip me off. But what's going to be the deciding factor? Price. <laughs> Let's talk about normal prices, not these unusual discounts I get. Uh, for Brandy San Luis, you're talking about say $27 a bottle, I'm talking about regular size bottles. For Blue Swift, probably, and I did some research on different stores carrying it, they're all, they're all about the same price. So Blue Swift, you're probably talking about 20, about the same price, $26, $27 a bottle. It'll fluctuate a little bit. But I mean, it, you'll spend so much time trying to save $2 that it wouldn't be worth trying to save two dollars. You know what I mean? It's like buying Crown Royal. You could shop here, there, 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 here, there. Well, the price is going to always be about the same. So you're not going to. It's really not going to be worth your effort to be shopping around. Now I did because I was already aware of who had what. So when Walmart had the big handle bottle of Crown Royal for $45.99. I said, okay, that's a good price. But I knew that when Dixie had the gift pack for a dollar cheaper with the two glasses, which as it turned out, they used some cheap glass in those glasses because I had them stack one on the other and I went to pull it off and it chipped the glass. It just broke. I said, how could the glass break so easily with just doing that? I mean, that's a common thing for people to do. And my friend David said, it's a cheap glass. That's why I was in the gift pack. I'll say he's got to be right because, I mean, for a glass to break that with such little effort. Well, I got one left at least, but I mean, that's not a good indication. These seem to be fairly sturdy. I broke one though, but it wasn't because of some little normal routine behavior. I was washing dishes and something in the sink in the drain, you know, where you let them dry, fell in it, hit the stem of the glass and chipped, chipped the bottom, you know, the platform. I say, well, got three left. I might be able to get a fourth down the road one day, but uh, these have been pretty resilient. The Glen Cairn, shoot, that's the flimsiest things I've ever run across in my life. John and Nilly gave me four of them. He got a discount deal with Amazon. He said, he told me it didn't cost me anything because he had a lot of points built up or whatever. I didn't really understand that because I don't deal with Amazon. But he um, he said, you can have them as a gift and I appreciated it. But they're so flimsy. Even every time I would wash the glass, I was worried it would break that thin. And of course, and it took me about a year and I broke three of them. One, the bottle slipped out my hand and the neck of the liquor bottle hit the glass, shattered it. Okay, that would happen with a sturdier glass, I suppose. But the other two incidences, the my, most minute little impact in the glass was broken. I said, uh-uh. Nice tulip shape, good to direct the, or at least theoretically, huh? To direct the fumes into your nose and all. But if it's that flimsy, it almost loses practicability. Practical. And I saw the prices for these. $8 for a single glass. Um, and that's if you get lucky. It, it starts to become not such a good deal. All right. I think those have only been on the market since like 2001, 19 years. Not like it's an old time. Oh, you know. Oh, boy. People have been using Glen Cairn glasses since 1470. No. If you look at all the old liquor ads from decades ago, 
They're just drinking out of regular old glasses. It doesn't look like anybody's like stressed over it. Like, oh, I can't pick up the aroma. I can't pick up the taste. The glass isn't right. It's all about the glass. No, not really. But it's, you know, I'm not anti-glassite. I don't want people to take it the wrong way. I think people overplay it. That's what I'm saying. Same thing with beer, you know. You know, that beer is profoundly different, profoundly different in a tulip glass as opposed to that cylindrical glass, that DIPA. Man, I bet you it's even, I bet you the differences aren't even marginal. They're probably imperceptible. This brandy smells nice, floral, like you know, flower, nectar, whatever. Oh, Food Quig. Good morning, Ron. Good morning to you, Food Quig. I think your name is Andy. Uh, I believe I saw you pop up on Facebook with Robert Hendricks, the Whiskey Scout. But I, I usually don't send friend requests to people because I feel like I'm bugging them, you know. But you are welcome. But I mean, I would, you know, be friends with anybody, you know, on Facebook. But I... I mainly just talk to people in the groups like Alcohol Legs and Rock and Roll Club because that's where we have common contact points. Rock and Roll Club, well, people that are interested in rock and roll music, we talk about the music they're posting, some good, some bad. Now, that's all subjective anyway. Alcohol Legs, that group on Facebook, we talk about, well, you guessed it, alcohol, beer, wine, and liquor. Uh, I don't know Food Quig, he doesn't know me, but we have a common interest, liquor, you know, whiskey is especially, but I'm not a good Facebook friend in the sense that like I follow everybody and comment on their posts. I've got over 800 Facebook friends and we use that term light, lightly, friends. I don't know most of the people. They send me requests and I'll, I'll approve it. But I don't follow their posts. If they're in Rock and Roll Club, of course I do, because it's Rock and Roll Club. I administer the group. I want to see what everybody's posting, you know. But it'd be like flipping through the phone book and then making friends with random people that you don't know and then following what they do in their life. <laughs> I don't look through the phone book and say, oh, look, they went camping. You know, I just, I can't get into that. I really can't get into that social media sort of like psychological manipulation. I think now it's like psychological manipulation. I didn't know what it was in 2010 when I joined. I didn't know what it was. Women at work used to talk about it, but all they talked about is Farmville. I thought it was something to do with a game. Farmville. But what they were doing is they were talking to each other on Facebook about Farmville, this game, which I would never have any interest in. Maybe Risk. <laughs> Maybe if they were playing Risk, you know. This one is uh, floral also, like uh, Nectar. Um, oh, now, I mean, friends and family, people I actually know, yeah, I follow them, like people I've been knowing, you know, years and years, like my sister, my father, who never posts anything, um, you know, the, that's sensible, because you're interested in what people do, that you actually know. But no, I don't send birthday wishes to people I don't know. I, I can't do it. <laughs> All right. But this one has a spicier component. Um, you say like mint, no, some kind of food spice, like a sweet spice. Well, mint is sort of like that. Maybe nutmeg or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's not that, but it's some spiciness. They both smell nice and neither one of them smells like turned fruit. You know how in the past I said a lot of French brandy smells like fruit that's turned, <laughs> like it's rotting, you know, <laughs> um, this is a little bit like that, which is making me think it's Martel. No, I don't really know. Could be either one. But anyway, they both smell pretty nice and uh, they look nice. They smell fine. So it's tie, tie. The price is the same. So that's a tie. That doesn't matter. Uh, but what I do I think is going to differentiate them? The taste, not so much the taste, but the intensity. Uh, I think the 86 proof 
you know, 43% alcohol versus 40%, the 80 proof is going to matter. That's going to be the tipping point like it was with the Martel VS. The, the, the higher proof kind of gives it away a little bit, but let's go with it. Now, who makes the uh, Brandy San Luis for Riku Spirits? Um, oh, a little waxiness here. Well, she was talking about that on her website and in some interviews I was listening to. But um, I, I, I never heard of the company. I guess it's a company that probably is like in America. They do contract distilling mainly. You know what I'm saying? They're like, they just they just make stuff for people. You know, whatever you want, like beer, like Octopi Brewing in Wisconsin. They don't make their own brands. They just produce beer for whoever comes along and wants them to produce a beer. Like Mid Midwest Grain Products (MGP) That's what they make their money off of: distilling liquor for other people. But they did say they were going to start their own brands. Now, whether that ever happened, I don't know. Yeah, it's an industry, producing stuff for other people. Can you imagine having that Walmart contract to produce coffee for Walmart? You'd make a fortune just doing that. The beer was pretty grim, though. <laughs> Those Walmart beer brands. That was so substandard. And that's why they don't make it anymore. Well, actually, the quasi-craft beer wasn't bad. The... Uh, what do they call it? The um, Cats Away IPA and um, Trouble Brewing. They were strange. Sort of aberrant in a way. It's like the pale ale wasn't quite what it should be and the IPA wasn't quite what it should have been and so on. But... Um, and the red ale, no, but they actually had a pretty good flavor. Um, they were dang cheap for a 12 pack. I know they were made at Rochester, New York by, you know who, Genesee, NAB, North American Breweries, but I guess people didn't buy it. I did, but most people didn't mess with it. You know? But that, that rock, what was it? The, the ice, the regular and the light, Rockdale, that was some, oh, man, the more you drank it, the worse it was. It was just so terrible. Now, do they make Walmart brand liquor? Not to my knowledge. I've never seen anything like that. You say, what about Caliber? Yeah, well, I used to think Caliber was a Walmart brand, but, now, but why do I keep seeing it at other stores? You know, why do I see it at Savannah Discount? Why do I see it at Rouse's? That'd be the craziest private label I've ever seen. A private label you can get anywhere? <laughs> That's a brand. Albertsons, they have their private labels. You never see them anywhere but Albertsons. I bet you'll never see D.W. Anders brand anywhere but Albertsons. D.W. Anders, you're going to see it at Albertsons. And on, I'm the same way with Facebook, says Food Quig. Oh, okay, yeah. Hey, but if you want to join Alcohol Eggs, feel free. It's kind of a fun group. We have a good time over there. It's pretty laid back. We haven't really had trouble with anybody. We had, well, we had a few little incidences with some kind of strange people, but um, you know what I'm talking about, peculiar people, uh, kind of difficult people. You run into those kinds, you know. <laughs> but we run into those kinds in the Knights of Columbus and, uh, you know, these social clubs, whatever, these, you know the type. Everything's a problem, you know, everything's a problem. Cause it, but it's because they really don't want to be in a group. They want it to be a solo act that everybody adulates, you know what I'm saying? It's not like they join the Lions Club because they want to be in the Lions Club. They join the Lions Club because they want everything to be shining a light on them and when they don't get that at that constant attention then it's a trouble then trouble occurs you know and it's like alcohol eggs they 
they're not really interested in anybody else's post. Could care less about beer, wine, and liquor people drink. Good man. It's all about look at me, look at what I'm doing. And when people don't slavishly follow it, they get offended. Same thing a rock and roll club. You get those types. They're not going to listen to your music. You could put a gun to their head. They wouldn't listen to it. But they'll post their stuff. And that's what they're interested in. And they demand that you listen to the. And you have to love it. You know, this is the greatest music ever. Most people listen to it, be indifferent to it, say it's. Okay, you know, and then they get furious, you know, you mean Rush did not change your life or whatever band could be any band, you know, that's a good example of a band where people have this like almost religious attachment to it. And you say, well, well, well they didn't change my life. Uh, I'll listen, you know, they're okay. Oh, they just fly off the handle, you know, you know, the type. Can't look at anything objectively. Uh, but but aside from those kind of things, which you're going to have, it's going to happen. Uh, yeah, it runs pretty well. Uh, Rock and Roll Club and Alcohol Legs is pretty smooth sailing most of the time, you know. Like these two brandies, it's pretty smooth sailing. Um, is there a major, significant and profound difference between the two? I would say no, not really. There are differences, certainly. They're not profound. How about the quality? No. No, there's no quality differences. Uh, it's a each to each his own type thing. Martel does everything to pinpoint perfection. You know, they're on point to a T. They've been doing brandy since 1715. Pretty sure they got their cognac production down to absolute perfection, right? Okay. Brandy St. Louis, you say, well, they're new. They've only been in the game two years. Yeah, doesn't matter. Riku Spirits say, look, we want it designed this way. So these master distillers in France, okay, so what? They're contract distillers. You want it this way? Uh. They plug in the algorithm, it's done. That's how this is. You say it's an art. Well, <laughs> Yeah, but it's really a science. You know what I'm saying? This big production stuff is a science. You say, well, I know a guy, his cousin has a, has a microbrewery in Connecticut, and he's got three people working for him. It's an art. Well, yeah, in that case, it's an art. And one batch might be the best beer you ever tasted in your life. The next batch, you might gag on it. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a very wishy-washy situation. High, high, low, low. Is, there, is, that, is that a bad thing? No, I didn't say it was a bad thing. I try craft beers all the time. Many, are, many of them are just fabulous. I mean, fabulous. Others are monstrously bad. You say, oh, what are they thinking? Have they gone crazy? Huh, I got one coming up, a review coming up. Unbelievable, terrible, horrible beer. You say, well, I ain't never heard of that beer company. Yeah, I know. I ain't either. I tried it. It was so nasty. Mm -mm -mm. I scored it a D. When I wrote the written review, it went to a C. Then I kept drinking it. It was back to a D. I said, no, this stuff just bad. Bad news, baby. I tried that craft uh, whiskey uh, um, from uh, New England. I liked it. To me, it was interesting. They aged it in bourbon and cherry wood and all, bourbon barrel. But my friend David hated that stuff. He said, oh, this stuff's terrible. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, he went on. I said, it's not terrible. It's, you know, a little peculiar. It's uh, You can tell it's not from a mass-produced company. I mean, no way Brown Foreman would let something like that come out there their doors. No way. It's too eccentric, but I didn't care for Berkshire Mountain Distillery, some company ain't nobody heard of made in a metal building. Thought it was all right, you know, but he still got that nearly full bottle sitting on his shelf, setting on his shelf. I say, oh, look at you. You're just wasting it. 
I don't want it. Oh, uh, well, let it stay there forever, I guess. I did my bottle. I, I blew through my bottle over about a nine month period. And it was gone and it was good. Like I say, you'd never see it come out of a Martell or Shivas Brothers, Brown Foreman, Sazerac. Well, maybe Sazerac, but it would be one of their cheap brands, you know, like their $6.99 bottles that you never know what you're going to get with that. You say, well, that's just their overflow stuff, stuff that didn't come out right. They just cast it off in some cheap brandy. Of course. That's why it's $6.99 a bottle. But when you're paying those kind of crazy prices, you, you expect questionable experiences. But, you know, if it's coming from Buffalo Trace, which is Sazerac's respectable portfolio, you're never going to get some, you know, they're not going to put out. Uh -uh. Oh, no. Just their old bomb stuff. All right. Okay, no more comments. All right, so here's the final question of the hour. It's all gone. Which do I prefer? Well, actually, I prefer both. This one has a nice waxy quality, nice, um, you know, um, what you call it, um, nectar. You know, I, I, I'm getting a little scared because the proof is not... The proof is not coming into play too much. You say, oh, yeah, I hear you slurring. It's come. I'm talking about it's not coming into play on differentiating them. Is the Blue Swift higher than 40? Did I make a mistake? No? Read this thing. Yeah, it's 40. Straight up 40 proof, so, hmm. I figured if I kept talking and telling stories, sometimes I do that as a as a stalling tactic because I'm trying to figure them out. You know, you say you're deceitful. You're trying to misdirect people. Yeah, but I'm not, you know, lying. I'm just using deception. <laughs> All right. You know what I'm saying? Like trying to steer it away from that. But uh, no, it didn't work. I, I steered it away and told stories, but I could. Mm. Wow, this is like the most direct tie ever. It's like even, even down the line. I suppose that's a good thing because if you say, well, what's wrong? They're both delicious. They're the same price. You can't get them in your town. Well, I can get Blue Swift. I can get it. I can go right there in the Matherns. They got it on the shelf. Uh, Brandy St. Louis. <laughs> no. I saw it at Savannah Discount. I'll probably never see it again. Uh, I think that the Martel has that waxy note. Because some cognacs, you know, they have that beeswax taste. What causes beeswax taste? I don't know. It's a good flavor, though. It's not like offensive or off-putting. It's just something like the way I perceive it, like it's beeswax. You know it isn't any kind of wax. But um, you'd never taste that in whiskey. Uh-uh, no way. I've tasted so many whiskeys now. Ain't never tasted beeswax. Uh-uh. But brandy? Mm-hmm. So I think that's the giveaway in this case. I thought the proof would do it, but it didn't. It did not. So I think that this is the Martell. There's no winner. Nah, there's no winner. It's even. Even Steven. Uh, what about Corbell? I think Corbell's going to be the winner by virtue of the price point, meaning... I don't think Corbell is going to be any better or worse than the um, Brandy of San Luis. Flavor, it's going to be even, you know. But the Corbell, I can get $14.99 a liter. 
$14.99 a liter, 99 cents a liter at Dorgnax. Now, is Corbell well known in Louisiana? No, only their champagne, which everybody has Corbell champagne. Okay. Corbell brandy, it's not widely distributed in this state, nor is it widely known about. Now, apparently in Wisconsin, it's the number one brandy in Wisconsin. Well, I'm a long way from Wisconsin, so I can get Corbell at Corbell brandy at Dornax, and I don't think anywhere else. Uh, I saw a little bottle of the Corbell XS once at a, 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 a convenience store that's long out of business. It was uh, 80 proof in spiced with spices. Uh, and Tiny Mikowski and I did a duo uh, examination. It's a very good product. Uh, but no, Corbell is uh, not, not a player in this state. You may as well say it's not sold in Louisiana. I mean, because I can find it at one store in the whole city of New Orleans. No, that's not a good sign. But anyway, it's going to be even on quality. But Corbell is going to win by virtue of what? Price, price, price. I paid $20.99 for a 750 of Brandy St. Louis. And I went to Dornex and I got a liter of Corbell, a liter bottle of Corbell, 25% more for $14.99. It's going to win. I'm telling you now, save your time, save your effort. Don't watch because it's going to be a clear cut winner on price because the quality is going to be there. Corbell makes some really good stuff. But their prices are so good, oh, so very good. Now, think about that. You pay $22 for a seven fifty dollars at Jack Daniels. It's you know, okay if you like eating grits uh, or drinking grits. But Corbell, a liter bottle, $14.99. Is Corbell brandy better than Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey? Well, don't tell anybody I said it, but yeah, it's better. It tastes better, but we're not going to, we're not going to mention that off air or on air. Um, I didn't make that comment, nor, I, nor I, I am unaware of any such comment, nor am I at liberty to discuss any such comment, if that comment in fact did exist. Anyway, I'm going to say this is um, the Martell. Holy smokes, it's the Brandy St. Louis. Well, it just goes to show you. I said it was dang close, and it turned out to be so close, I couldn't tell them apart. <clears throat> Am I stunned by that? I'm not stunned. I'm a little disturbed because I thought the proof would give it away, but it didn't. You said the proof's in the pudding. Yeah, well, I ain't, I ain't eating pudding. I'm testing Brandy. Uh, anyway, um, <sighs> Well, I'm one and one, one right, one wrong. So I only got one left. So the best I can do is two thirds, 67%. Well, it's the way it goes, I guess. Do I plan to bring in more brandies? Uh, yeah, like an endless number. <laughs> Kevin Johnston says lots of rain here in Northern Virginia. How's it in Southeastern Louisiana? Well, it's unusual. It's hot. Well, that's normal, but it's dry. No. Not much humidity, so the it feels okay. You go walk, go for a walk, and it's ninety four degrees. It doesn't feel too hot. That's not going to last. It's going to change by Saturday. You're going to feel it. The humidity will be back, and then you'll have that, you know, asphyxiation uh, type experience. But I'm enjoying it while it's lasting. It's very nice right now. Jack Daniels is overrated, overpriced, but you didn't hear that from me. You know, I don't say it's overrated because I know people that love Jack Daniels. I mean, you know what I mean? They only drink Jack Daniels. I know these guys at the hot rod shop. They live on Jack Daniels. It's like their water. They're taking shots all day, which I don't recommend doing that. But if you ask them in their mind, Jack Daniels is so fabulous. To me, I don't, I'm like you. I don't get it. It's like I'm not paying $22 for Honestly, I could pay $8.99 for Benchmark, McAfee's Benchmark Old Number 8 from uh, Sazerac, Buffalo Trace, and, uh, you know, Benchmark's kind of like at least as good. It ain't worse. 
I didn't say benchmark was better than JD, but it's not worse. It is not worse. But they, they're just, they adore it. Like their their life is enhanced by taking shots of Jack Daniels. Okay, I'm not going to hate on that or disparage that or, you know, that's their thing. That's their thing. They're not going to be over there doing benchmark because it's benchmark. You know what I'm saying? They would say, oh, benchmark. So right off the bat, they don't like it because it's $8.99 a bottle, right? So they, benchmark, ugh. Now, I would say, well, how about a blind taste test? Oh, no, no, no. That's not going to happen. You know, that's not going to happen. We're not going there. Of course, you're not going to go there because that would upset the apple cart, you know. But anyway, phooey on it. I love Benchmark C. Got another Buffalo Trace fan out there. All right. Well, thanks for watching, y'all. Uh, I'm a little dismayed that I got it wrong, but uh, what the heck? I don't have a lot of experience with Brandy San Luis. This is only the third tasting of it. <gasps> But it seems pretty standard. I don't know. I think if I'm halfway through the bottle, I'm still going to have trouble with it. It's not because it's bad. It's certainly not bad. It's really, really very good. But it's so standard that it's just not going to stand out. There's nothing eccentric or, you know, unique about it. Just you say, eh, you mean it's just regular old French brandy. That's right. It's just regular old French brandy. That tastes really nice. All right, so thanks for watching this. Uh, probably in about, say, four hours, I'll be back for Friday's slot. And it's going to be Brandy San Luis versus Corbell. But like I say, that's going to be the real war because Corbell's got that price point advantage, and it's a great advantage, a great advantage. Thank you for watching this video production.